أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وطبيب نفوسنا وحبيب قلوبنا أبي القاسم محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم لا سيما بقية الله روحه وأرواح العالمين لمقدمه الفداء علي حبه جنة قسيم النار والجنة وسي المرتضى حقا إمام الإنس والجنة اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, mourners for such a grief night for the lovers and the followers of Ahlul Bayt al-Musalam Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh It is my honor and privilege to be with you tonight with the assistance of uh, Rebecca from the Auslan Interpretation to present to you another, inshallah, uh, part of our series of talks on nearness or means of nearness to God. SubhanAllah, especially in tonight being this such a very significant night for the lovers and the followers of Ahlul Bayt al-Musalam. Tonight is the night of 19th of the holy months of Ramadan, one of the possible nights of Ghad, or perhaps to be more precise, one of the prerequisite nights in preparation for the actual night of Ghad that God knows best when exactly it will be. And at the same time, it coincides with the night of the assassination of our beloved Imam Amir al Mu'minin. Ali ibn Abi Talib, Wasiyu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. For the lovers and the followers of Ahlul Bayt, tonight is the beginning of the night of the grief as it marks the martyrdom of not only the voice of human justice, rather it's the night of the martyrdom of the crystallization and manifestation of divine uh, justice, Amir al Mu'minin, Imam Ali alayhi salam. For this reason, tonight I have something very, very special, inshallah, by the grace of God to share with you. The topic for tonight is the firmest divine handhold. What is the handhold? Imagine a scenario, metaphorically, uh, I'm giving you an example, and then we'll bring it to the religious context of our discussion. Suppose that you are driving to Blue Mountains, you want to, for some reasons, climb the mountain. I'm not sure if you, are, you have the tools and the, you are able to do that or not, but just as an example, metaphorical example. The mountain is rocky and steep, and therefore you need something to, to clinch on, to, to, to grasp and to grip on. All right? These are handholds to, to make sure that you, pro you are protected and you protect yourself. The life of the dunya, brothers and sisters, by and large, is sometimes like mountain climbing. Sometimes it's very steep, difficult. We need handholds to make sure that we are protected. Sometimes it becomes like a roller coaster that is very dangerous, okay, to make sure that I, I, I don't get lost in the direction or I don't fall. Handholds are so necessary. I'm not talking about the physical handholds. I'm talking about in journey towards nearness to God also, we need such handholds. The Almighty God, due to His infinite mercy, 
has introduced a special, a very special handhold that I refer to it and the words of Masumin, they refer to it as the firmest handholds that if you really clench into it hard, there is no way whatsoever you will be lost, you fall neither in this world nor the rest. You will be saved and you will be safeguarded. And that handhold is called Al-Walaya, it's called love. So the topic for tonight by divine and the firmest divine handhold, I mean the love, the elixir of love. This love is introduced in the Quran and as a handhold twice at least from my memory. One is in the second chapter of the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 255-255. Many of you, inshallah, you know that Ayah were those known as Ayah Al-Kursi. فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالطَّاغُودِ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ اسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوُثْقَى That this عروت الوثقى, this firm handhold, is what we are going to talk about it tonight. Another one is in Surah Luqman, similar to that, that the Almighty God says, whoever submits themselves sincerely to the sake of God, they have adhered and clinged to that firm divine handhold. All right. This handhold is so important in nearness to God and towards of a perfection and promotion that great scholars, Muslim mystics who have made this journey, they say it is just impossible. Listen to me. It is just impossible for anyone to attain nearness to God and proximity with God unless they hold on to this handhold unless they have it, unless they enjoy this alexia within themselves. This is called the walayat and the love. What is the walayat? By the way, the common mistake, they pronounce it walayat. Often I may say this as, as a common mistake. But the proper Arabic is al-walayat. As the Quran says, هُنَالِكَ الْوَلَايَةُ لِلَّهِ Love. This term walaya is an amazing word. Allow me to just massage your your Arabic uh, uh, literacy a little bit and analyze the term a, li a little bit more. Al-walaya, literally it means when two things are so close to each other that there's nothing in between. Imagine now if you can look at my fingers, these two fingers close to each other, there's nothing. If I put my thumb in between, there's no walaya between the two index fingers. But I remove the, uh, the thumb and I can say that there is a walaya between the two and there is nothing in between. So walaya literally it means that when two things are so close that there is no stranger in between. No stranger. Pay attention to the wordings. That's why in Arabic when you want to say that this person is my body, is my mate, is my very intimate friend, so close to me, wali. We use the term wali for an, a very intimate friend, a, a friend that is innermost, that you share your secret with. Nobody else knows about your secret more than him or her. Okay? This is called wali. What answers your actual wali, in other words, your actual friend, your actual intimate friend, is the Almighty God, your creator, obviously. Because he's nearer to you than you to yourself. He knows more about your secrets than you know about yours. yours. Okay? So the, the actual, in the real sense of it, wali is the Almighty God. Wallahu huwa wali yul hamid. He is your intimate friend, but at the same time is so praiseworthy. Meaning that often, unfortunately, an intimate friend may disgrace you. Often an intimate friend, your, your body may forsake you. The Almighty God is the actual, real, intimate friend, will never forsake you, will never disgrace you. In as much as unless you disgrace, we disgrace ourselves. Otherwise, God is, is always uh, concealing. All right? So at the same time, so remember, Wali has one meaning of being so near to someone. And now you know why in means, uh, as a means of nearness to God, we need this. At the same time, Wali is the protector as well. Guide and protector. Wali is a teacher as well. That's what actually an, an amazing word that the, the meanings are all correlated to, the, to each other. It makes a system uh, that they uh, connect them all to each other. 
we want to learn tonight that role models that the Almighty God has introduced to us, they are our awliya in a pure form, meaning that they are our friends, they are our protectors, they are our guides, and at the same time we're supposed to make a very intimate relation with them, very loving relation with them, that we feel so close to them, and Quran says that the Almighty God says that once you have that link of love with your role models that are introduced to you, then you are holding to that handhold that you'll you'll be in a safe hand. In fact, you'll you'll be holding to the firmest handhold. Who are they? As humans, starting with the holy prophets, with the successors of the prophets. Because on the one hand, look, in the journey towards ascension and proximity with God, the role models are my awliya. God says, because on the one hand, they have reached the peak of the mountain. Remember the example of blue mountains we mentioned? They have reached the peak of the blue mountain. They reach the nearest possible of proximity to God. So from on the one hand, they are they've become godly or they act godly met metaphorically remember the example of that piece of metal that i told you that you bring it close to the fire it becomes fiery it burns and it the, the color gets reddish so on the one hand they act godly that we call it miracles on the other hand like us humans so because they look and they, they act they eat drink they they reproduce live like humans I feel that they are like me and I look at them as my, my role models, human role models. On the other hand, they have made this journey that I'm yet to start often and they know how to make it. So, or answers, you just don't, don't need you. More important than just telling us follow, uh, follow them or answers, love them. If you love them, automatically, lovingly, you, lo you follow them. And this is whole, the whole creation is created like this. A man, let me prove it through uh, a, a, a story. An old man, remember I'm talking about 1300 years ago. In those days, you cannot imagine how tough it was to travel from one part of the world to another. So a man from a remote area, an old person, pour him on food, he made his way all the way to Medina. From my memory, he had come from Khorasan, part of today's Iran, couple of months on the road, and until he reached Medina, straight goes to the house of Imam Bagr, the fifth Imam. Imam Bagr is sitting with his companions, and the man enters the house, and as soon as he looks at the a glowing and the beautiful face of Imam al-Baghr alayhi salam, the guy was burst into tears. That attracted the attention of the crowd. Everyone turned around and looked at the old man in tears. And the man begins like this, Assalamu alaikum ibn Rasulullah. I've come from such a long journey, very remote area. Nothing has brought me here other than your love. My wish was to be to be alive, to get here, to be able to see your face. And now I'm, I'm so emotional and the man could hardly speak. Am I on the right track? Look at the answer of Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam. Imam says, Hal illa al -hub? What do you think Islam is? Is Islam other than the religion of love? Unlike unfortunately misrepresentation of Islam, that these are our role, noble, infallible models. That Imam al Baghdad al says, Hal illa al -hub? Is Islam other than love? And then the Imam continues. The Imam says that if you want to see how much of a good Muslim are you or not, if you want to know if there is any goodness in you, Fanubur, check with your heart, see if you love. Look how, what the Imam is emphasizing on. The Imam says, that, see if you love those who are obedient to God, those who are benevolent, those who are good guys in a simple language. If you love good guys in your heart, and at the same time you like to associate with them, 
you wish to be like them and you endeavor to be close to them and associate with them on the one hand because remember love is a coin that has two sides on the one side of the coin of love it means you love your mate your intimate friends uh, and associate with them and but on the other side of the love you dissociate yourself from the foes and the enemies of your friend you cannot say that you are my mate you we are, we are intimate friends but all the time i see you hanging around with my enemies with those that oppose me i don't trust you and you don't trust me as a, as a friend as an intimate friend you don't share your secrets with me isn't it so the the real love has two sides that's what we call it at tawalla and tabarra one side of it yes you love though and certain good people benevolent people and you love to associate with them and at the same time you want to dissociate the imam says that and you don't like to associate with bad guys with sinful people you want to dissociate yourself from them if you find this inside you you are on the right track and this is the religion of Islam and that's why you know that the old uh, ancient prophets they had each one had a uh, appellation and a title like Musa Kalimullah, Moses, the one is spoken to by God. God spoke to Moses. Isa Ruhullah, Jesus, son of Mary. Ruhullah, it means that God blew from his spirit, from his life to him, and he became a living creature without his mother being touched by a man. So Isa Ruhullah, what was the title of the Holy Prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad? Muhammad Habibullah Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad So the title of the Prophet of Islam deliberately is chosen by God as Muhammad the lover of God So the lover of God his book and his teaching is nothing other than the, the book of love Because he is a lover when you see with the lovers they speak nothing other than the love True lovers, they only like to talk about their beloved ones. Any, any opportunity, I'm not trying to, I'm not talking about the romantic love, huh? Although romantic love is a metaphorical love so that you and I can understand the real love. True lovers, in any opportunity, they enjoy talking about their beloved ones. Now, with this introduction, the Almighty God, through the teachings of the Quran and the words of the Holy Prophet reveals to us that you want to come to me this is the handhold through the path of love the path of love is a shortcut is a very smooth path is a path that you don't suffer is the path that pray, praying fasting is no longer a burden it's an honor you enjoy it because you love it because you love the one you are doing it for. I usually give the example of the pang of delivery. The pang of delivery is painful, okay? But why is it that moms, at least in the old days, now uh, uh, epidural and, and things like that, I've put it differently, but why is it moms, they, they tolerate it, they call it, it's a pleasant pain. It's a pain, but it's a pleasant pain because she knows what she's going through and she is for a good cause so praying fasting and all these things are no longer pain and painful if you are in love with god quran says in surah shura chapter 42 that the prophet says you want to come near to me in paradise there is only there is one main condition to it and that is for my entire mission i ask you of no reward no wages no compensation other than the love of my near of the king love my near of the king the holy household of the prophet and that will bring you to me how ya rasulallah allahu akbar it's because it's not that because prophet is after a wage you know, none of the prophets, none of the only Allah, they ever asked their community for any, for any wages in lieu of what they gave them. No prophet, no imam ever ascended the pulpit, delivered the lecture, expecting an envelope at the, after that. Impossible. They never expected anything from people other than listen and follow. 
But why is it that the Prophet of Islam exceptionally says that I ask you for a reward in lieu of what I've given you? Uh -huh. In Surah Al-Furqan, the Almighty God explains that, says that قُلْ مَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ عَجْءِ إِلَّا مَنْ شَاءَ أَنْ يَتَّخِذَ إِلَى رَبِّهِ سَبِيلًا For those who, are, who want to make the journey towards God, they want to reach that proximity with God, this elixir of love makes the journey smooth, comfortable, and you enjoy it, and fast, by the way, and a shortcut. And that's why there is no Muslim, you know, we have denominations in Islam, but the love of Ahlul Bayt, the love of the Holy Household of the Prophet, uh, when it comes, as soon as the love of Ahlul Bayt appears, sectarianism disappears. In Ziyarat al jamaa we read like this, that the Imam says that by the love of Ahlul Bayt, the uh, sectarianism disappears. There is no more sectarianism because there is no Muslim who ever would say that I don't love the family of the Prophet. Astaghfirullah. I don't love the Prophet or I don't love the family of the Prophet. Such people cannot be Muslim. Impossible. Despite all different sectarianism, denominations, Shia, Sunni or, or anyone. So they, that, that, is the, that shows in itself the significance of the love of Ahlul Bayt and Muslim. And that's why, why emphasis on love? Because they wanted us to make this journey. Narrations that you see that the Prophet says, for example, the parable of my family are locked, is like the Ark of Noah, the Ark of Noah. Man rakebaha naja, whoever embarks is, is safeguarded. Whoever uh, leaves it will drown. Expressions like the Prophet says, another Ali ibadah, looking at the face of Ali ibn Abi Talib is considered a worshipping. Dhikru Ali yin ibadah, talking about Ali is worshipping because it's talking about the one that you love. إن الحسين مصباح الهدى وسفينة النجاة. حسين is the Imam Hussein is the lamp of guidance and the ark of salvation. All of these to bring our attention to introduce them to us, and you cannot get to know the noble character of Imam Ali alayhi salam unless you love him. A Christian writer, a Lebanese Christian, George Jordak. When he studies the biography of Ali ibn Abi Talib, look at the, he writes a book, Ali, the Voice of Human Justice. Impossible for anyone who come to get to know these noble characters, but to love them. But, but, love is not just about saying that, okay, I love Ali ibn Abi Talib, that's it. No, love has its own expressions. It has its own reflections on our love. One is that when you love someone, you look at them as a role model and you like to be like them. You see how they live their life, you try to adapt their lifestyle to your life. This is very important. To be with them, if you want to be with them, then you need to try to be like them as much as possible. Second, follow them. Tell them your Muhammad, God is talking to Prophet of Islam. If you truly love God, then follow me, meaning that follow the messenger of God. If you love God, follow the messenger of God, then the Almighty God will love you as well. Another expression, I'm conscious about my time already, it's almost past. Another expression of love is that someone that you love, you are happy in their happiness and you are sad in their sadness. Many people die around the world. May God bless them all. But why is it that when my mother died, when, when my father died, when someone very near to us dies, you feel different because you have different feelings for them, because there is a love, connection of love. Now, one of the signs to check how much I love the holy, noble family of the Prophet, the Imams of Ahlul Bayt al Muslim, to see that whether I'm different in the night of their martyrdom, in the night of their happiness and or sadness. Like tonight, which is the night of the martyrdom of Imam Ali alayhi salam, is the night that the voice of 
human justice was unfairly assassinated. And Amir al-Mu'mini towards the end of his life reached a stage, that's why we say he was so madlum, so unfairly treated by people around him that he wished he's, he, that he doesn't want to be with them anymore. Allow me to take you to Kufa in a night like tonight. It's the month of Ramadan. Obviously, Amir al has been fasting today, but for Iftar was invited to the house of his, one, his daughter Zainab, Umm Kulthum, Salamullah alayha. Then Zainab says that my father usually, his meal was very simple, but especially tonight, he, uh, he had a very light uh, Iftar and dinner. And I said, Dad, you didn't eat much tonight. And my father says, I don't, I, I wish to meet God with the light uh, uh, and the stomach. What Imam is talking about? After the dinner, after the iftar, Imam spent the whole night like tonight in worshiping God, didn't sleep. Sometimes he's praying, sometimes he's walking in the courtyard of the house of Zena and looks up to the sky and says that this is the night that I was promised. Ya Allah, what Ali ibn Abi Talib is talking about. Close to dawn is about the time to go to the masjid to lead the morning prayer. Imam Ali alayhi salam is talking under breath or very softly in a poetry way. Ushtad hayazihi makal al-mawt fa'inna al-mawt laqika Ali Fasten your belt, get ready for death. When the death is coming to you, when the angel of death is coming to get to collect you, don't be scared, don't complain. Zainab and the children, they go to Imam Ali, Ya, ya Amir al mumani Dad, what's happening? Please, we are not comfortable. Don't go to the mosque this morning to lead the prayer. Imam says that this is the divine destiny, is inevitable. Imam is making his way to get out of the house and Zainab had some ducks at home and these birds they come flapping around Amir al -Mumanin. Perhaps their silent language is to try to stop Agha Ali ibn Abi Talib. But Imam makes his way. When he wants to open the door to leave the house, the door is even jammed. The remover of the gate of Khaybar obviously easily he opened the door and made his way to the mosque of Kufa. As soon as the Imam entered the mosque, he, he noticed that his murderer, Ibn Muljam al Lain, he is lying down on his chest, hiding his sword. Remember that he had already spent a lot of money poisoning his sword so that when he's assassinating, striking Amir al muminin not only he kills the Imam by the, by the sword, by the cut of the sword, also the poison makes the, 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 the assassination more firm. Imam is kicking him with his foot and says, don't sleep like a hypocrite, meaning that I know what you are up to and makes his way to the mihrab. Imam Ali alayhi salam stands to lead the prayer and all the mu'mineen and the believers, they say he rose behind the Imam and Ibn Muljam al Lain is standing right behind the Imam. Apparently when the Imam goes to the first sajda, before the Imam sat, sits up from the position of the sajda, Ibn Muljam al Lain, while everybody is in the position of Sajda, he stood up and he raised his sword waiting for the Imam. And the Imam was immediately assassinated while leading the morning prayer. Ibn Muljam struck the fatal blow and hit the crown of Imam's head by his poisonous sword. Why the holy head is split open? Imam Ali cried out, Bismillah, Imam Allah. 
و علا ملت رسول الله فست و رب الکعبه بای دی لورد آف کعبه این دی نیم آف گاد ام بای دی لورد آف کعبه نا علی ایس سکسسفول ای هیونلی کرای واز هرد فرم اول اراند کوفه تهدمت والله ارکان الهدا و انفصمت والله العروت الوثقا by Allah the pillar of guidance is broken the firm divine hand hold is broken what happened قتل ابن عم محمد عم محمد المصطفى the cousin of the prophet the son in law of the prophet is assassinated قتل علي المرتضى علي المرتضى يسكين قتله أشغل أشقياء the most wretched creature of God killed him على لعنة الله على القوم الظالمين وسيعلم الذين ظلموا أي منقلب ينقلبون سلامات